For its first few decades, the artistry of robotic surgery has been dominated by one machine, Da Vinci. With patents now expiring, new companies, tech and ideas are flooding the market. So what we're building is a handheld device that's uh, less uh, expensive. And what the surgeons can do, they can operate in very confined spaces with precise, accurate, uh, delicate manoeuvres. Whilst robots were only involved in one out of every 400 NHS operations last year, their use is increasing fast. In the past four years, it's nearly doubled from 24 to nearly 48,000 procedures. I think the entire landscape of surgery may change over the next few years with the introduction of robotics and AI. Tests have shown basic procedures like stitching can now be done without any human involvement. And machines can be controlled remotely, meaning patients in one country can be operated on by surgeons in another. The current legislation probably isn't fit for the existing robots and certainly not fit for the robots that are emerging. They're just too complex. The last leap forward of this scale was the introduction of keyhole surgery in the early 90s. It was shiny, new and promised quicker recovery. But there was a problem. Training hasn't kept up with this fantastic pace of development. The result? A series of tragic errors. To try and avoid making the same mistakes again, surgeons from 12 countries, led by teams at UCL and Oxford, have put together a new framework. We shouldn't be afraid of advances in technology, but we need to evaluate them properly and we need to make sure that they're safe, effective and value for money before we adopt them wholeheartedly. Get it right and the rewards are obvious. In the future, robots may be able to map movements of your stomach or capture the inside of your colon by driving a camera straight through it. But whilst technology advances faster than legislation, it may be prudent to proceed with caution. Martin Stew, News at 10.